Hi, we are Group 11 and in this video, we're going to present to you about urban wildlife management and rehabilitation. Let me first introduce to you about urbanization. It takes place in order to meet the demand of rising human population. Forested areas are converted into residential areas. This then put on a massive pressure on land resources and cause habitat degradation and fragmentation. So what are the effects of urbanization on wildlife? Two issues that happen because of urbanization are root kills and human wildlife conflict. The linear layout of residential schemes and areas such as roads, buildings and fences brings danger to wildlife. Over the year from 2009 to 2019, a total of 102 Malayan turbine were lost due to root kill. And for a population of 1,000 to 1,500 individuals, this is such a massive loss. 2. Human wildlife conflict happens because the degradation of habitat and having human settlement near the forest increases the interaction between human and wildlife. Just recently in Terra, an elephant broke into a school to search for food. There are few importance of urban wildlife management. The first important is that it improves the understanding of urban ecosystems where people can determine and investigate which species thrive in urban areas and which do not, the factors that contribute to it, the interactions between urban wildlife and urban landscapes, and how the urban wildlife are influenced by the changes of native habitat. Next, it helps to reduce human wildlife conflict as we can understand the relationship and interactions between urban wildlife and urban landscape. Then, we can come up with the ideas in dealing with urban wildlife which can reduce human wildlife conflict foster human safety and reduce the damage. In addition, it helps to investigate the landscape connectivity and function. Refuge, parks and backyards act as stepping stones for urban wildlife as these areas provide habitats for them. In this way, urban landscapes can be utilized to manage urban wildlife. People are encouraged to explore more potential urban landscapes and enhance the existing urban landscapes. Lastly, Urban wildlife management play a role in rebuilding the connection and appreciation towards nature. Biophilia is encouraged by increasing people's exposure to nature and motivates a positive relationships and interconnections with urban wildlife. In this way, we are able to manage urban wildlife effectively. There are a few ways we can manage urban wildlife and the first one is urban planning. We can do cluster development, growth management and open space preservation. After deciding open space or preservation, we will want to retain and enhance its wilderness. We can also reduce accidental mortality. We can avoid planting fruit bearing plants next to highways, use bird safe glasses for windows, which are non reflective glasses for the windows of buildings, and clean bird feeders frequently. We can also provide essential resources for urban wildlife, such as food, water, feeding station, and vegetation cover. Here is an illustration of a region with good urban wildlife management. On the left, we have clustered development, which group together the human resettlement. And on the right side, we have open space preservation, which will serve as the habitat for urban wildlife. And on the highway side, we avoid planting root bearing trees so that the probability for urban wildlife to be killed by vehicles can be decreased. How urban wildlife management can be done, I will explain on how this can support wildlife conservation. As more urban areas are being developed, wildlife are in danger from several impacts. And urban wildlife management can help in direct conservation of urban wildlife and habitat, as direct conservation would minimize urban exploitation, maintain their ecological functions, and also help wildlife adapt by providing a viable area to survive. Other than that, urban wildlife management also helps assist in the population control where this will decrease the competition and also maintain a stable population for them to survive. And uh, urban wildlife management also can increase public interest and also awareness so in hopes that they will change their perception and donate to support wildlife conservation programs, especially in urban areas. An example is from this study by Lockton in Auckland, and they found that LED streetlights had limited negative impacts to urban wildlife than the conventional HPS light. Hence, managing urban areas by shifting to LED lights will provide better conservation benefits to wildlife in urban environment. In conclusion, Urban management is a complex field that includes strategies, activities, and instruments which make a city work. For the future urban manager or the planner, they should have the knowledge and background in architecture, engineering, environmental study, laws, and also governance and etc. so that they can secure the urban wildlife and also make us, the human beings, to live harmoniously with each other. Here are the references we use for these presentations and special thanks to all the people who made and released this awesome resource for free. Thank you.